Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what is meant by proto-oncogenes and oncogenes. You should then be able to describe the roles of oncogenes in cancer. In the last video, we saw that genetic changes to healthy cells can lead to the formation of a tumour. We saw that benign tumours do not spread from their initial location. So for example, this benign tumour on the inside of a person's cheek will grow but not spread. However, malignant tumours can spread, forming secondary tumours at distant sites from the primary tumour. Scientists call this spreading metastasis. So for example, the cells I'm showing here are malignant melanoma cells which have spread, forming a secondary tumour on the liver. And remember that primary and secondary malignant tumours are classified as cancer. So in this video, we're going to look at the genetic changes that take place leading to cancer. OK, now cell division by mitosis plays a major role in the development of every multicellular organism. For example, all humans start as a single cell, which is a fertilised egg cell. The fertilised egg cell now undergoes mitosis. For example, this four-cell human embryo has already run through two rounds of mitosis two days after fertilisation. Many rounds of mitosis take place during development, and the cells produced then differentiate, forming the specialised cells that we see in adult humans. Now, in adults, mitosis mainly takes place for cell replacement. For example, skin cells are continually shed, and red blood cells also have a limited lifespan. So these cells need to be continually replaced. Mitosis is also critical for wound healing. Now a key idea you need to understand is that cell division by mitosis is tightly regulated. Cells receive chemical signals telling them when to undergo mitosis and when to stop undergoing mitosis. However, mutations can cause these signaling systems to fail. And in this case, cells may undergo uncontrolled mitosis leading to a tumour. And in the case of malignant tumours, this is cancer. So in this video, we're going to look at a type of gene that plays a critical role in the development of cancer. These are called oncogenes. Now, as we said before, cells receive chemical signals telling them to undergo mitosis. Many of these chemicals are called growth factors. Growth factors work by binding to a specific protein receptor on the cell surface membrane. These receptors have three parts or domains. The extracellular domain is where the growth factor binds. This is connected to a transmembrane domain. And finally, we have an intracellular domain, which often contains an enzyme. When a growth factor binds to the extracellular domain, the structure of the receptor changes. This structural change activates the enzyme on the intracellular domain. The enzyme now triggers a signal within the cytoplasm, for example, the formation of a second messenger. And the result of this is to activate the genes required for mitosis to take place. So the growth factor has triggered the cells to undergo mitosis. And remember that when the growth factor is not present, the cell is not triggered to undergo mitosis. OK, now sometimes the gene for a growth factor receptor can be mutated. And this mutated gene produces an altered growth factor receptor. In this case, the growth factor receptor no longer has a binding site for the growth factor. And because of this, the enzyme is always activated even if there's no growth factor present. So the cell with this mutated receptor gene is continually triggered to undergo mitosis. So as you can see, the mutated gene for the growth factor receptor has led to uncontrolled mitosis. Now scientists refer to the mutated gene as an oncogene, and the word onco means tumour. The unmutated gene encoding the functional receptor is called a proto-oncogene. And the word proto means first or original. OK, now there's another way in which an oncogene can lead to a tumour. Some proto-oncogenes encode for growth factors. And in some cases, these growth factors act on the cells that produce them, triggering mitosis. Under normal conditions, the production of growth factor is tightly regulated. However, if the proto-oncogene is mutated, it can form an oncogene. And in this case, the oncogene produces excessive amounts of growth factor. This growth factor now binds to the receptor, and again, this triggers the cell to undergo uncontrolled mitosis. Now, there are a large number of proto-oncogenes in the human genome, and they all play essential roles in regulating mitosis. 
However, if these proto-oncogenes are mutated, they can form oncogenes. And in this case, the oncogene leads to uncontrolled mitosis and the formation of a tumour. Now, in some cases, a person can inherit an active oncogene from a parent. However, in most cases, oncogenes develop from a mutation that a person acquires in their lifetime. OK, I just want to end on a couple of points. Once an oncogene triggers uncontrolled mitosis, the cells can then undergo further mutations as the tumour develops. These mutations can alter the characteristics of the cells, potentially leading to a malignant tumour. And lastly, cells contain a range of genes which act to prevent the formation of tumours. These are called tumour suppressor genes, and we'll be looking at tumour suppressor genes in the next video.